Jesus, in this verse in Matthew 9, 35, 38, is speaking to his disciples, not a distant group of itinerant evangelists. These were the ones who are totally captivated by Jesus, the ones who are close enough, not some third party. And when we read these verses in Matthew chapter 9, we, we get the impression that, uh, that they've been interpreted to ask God to send somebody and hopefully somebody else. The New King James Version puts it, Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest, send out laborers. The King James says, Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest will send laborers. I can remember being in prayer meetings, huddled around a radiator in church. It wasn't even a radiator, it was one of these old storage heaters. You got a few there because it was the warmest place in the building. And myself and six old ladies, I was about 14, and six old ladies, they must have been in their 50s. <laughs> well, at 14, see the picture. They were probably actually nearer 80. Oh, Lord, we pray ye that you would send out workers from the harvest. And I'm looking around, and they're all 80. Who are they praying about? What charming. But we have that kind of idea that actually, by praying that workers are sent out, that we're praying that someone else would go. Who did Jesus send out on the Great Commission in Matthew 28? He sent the same group that had asked them to pray that God would send out workers into the harvest field. Can I say this, folks, and I, uh, I don't mean to upset anyone, but I'm going to. Send out workers is a command, not an invitation. The question is not, should I go? The question is not, should I go? The question has always been, do I have permission to stay? Do I have permission to stay? That hurts, doesn't it? But that's what Jesus was talking about. None of us have permission to stay. You say, I can't go overseas, I can't do any great thing. Well, we can do various things and we'll be putting together some various projects. But can I say this, and I was debating whether to say this or not, because we all arrive at this church from different points in our life and different places, but I want to put this on record as a pastor, and I know that every other pastor that hears this on the internet will say amen to this, but not many Christians will say amen to this. There are only three legitimate ways to leave a church. Only three. Oh dear. One, we move away. That sometimes happens. We can move overseas or move to a different city. Work takes us away. That's legitimate. If you're moving away, we'll bless you and you go. Two, promoted to glory. I think that's reasonably legitimate, don't you? We don't want to be rolling you up here on a Sunday three months after you've gone. We understand that. Promoted to glory. And three is sent out and blessed by the church. Sent out and blessed. And some of us here, and I know what this is like because I've done this. I've left church by the back door. I've shaken the dust off my shoes because, you know, bless those who bless you and all that. So I've shaken the dust off and I've stormed off and I've said, you know nothing. Did you not know that Billy Graham was in your midst? Only to discover seven years later, I went full circle and God took me back to that church and said, now you make it right. And some of us here maybe need to just write a simple letter to an ex-pastor and say, sorry I didn't tell you that I was going, but I now understand there are only three ways to leave a church. Either I move city, either I go to glory, or I'm sent out with a blessing. And if we read the New Testament, when they sent people out, they sent them on missions. Didn't send them to have a jolly They sent them. There was an intentional extending of the kingdom taking place. And if you're upset by those those three things, I'm sorry, but every pastor listening to this and everyone watching this on the internet will be saying, Amen, I wish I had the courage to tell my church that. I've run out of times, I'm out of pastors over the years that have come to me and said, you know, people just keep going and they never tell me. You know, they keep getting upset and they always disappear. And that, my friend, is not extending the kingdom. If one church gets big at the expense of another church, that is not building the kingdom of God. It isn't doing it. And we need to understand that as a church. 
that it's great when people join us, but I'm always thinking if, if they've come from another church locally, I need to go and see that pastor and just let them know. I do that. I go and see the pastor and say, are you okay? Because I know it hurts when someone you've invested your life in turns around and counts that as naught. That's not extending the kingdom. Extending the kingdom is actually taking our message of hope, taking the message of salvation, taking those things that we want to see promoted for all, faith, love, and hope, and displaying them in our lives and sharing them with people. And that, my friend, is extending the kingdom of God. And let us not call church growth transfer. That isn't growth. I don't want to see this church grow by one more person if it means that we have to do it at the expense of other local churches. Don't want to see that. My heart is birthed in outreach and evangelism. And all I want to see is the lost saved. And I want to see a growing, thriving church filled with new babies in the kingdom of God. Because I believe that's right, to desire that and to need that and want it. So, wrapping this up, the E of serve, extend by extending out with evangelistic events locally and internationally. My friends, we've a hope and a message. (laughs) Go tell someone.